A police officer who authorities say attempted to chase down a 38-year-old man with three active arrest warrants was fatally shot by the suspect Friday after an exchange of gunfire in a southern New Mexico town. I just want to point out before we continue, Friday is today, September 2nd, 2016. Uh, you know, just for future reference, in case anyone gets confused. So, the suspect, Joseph Marino, also was killed in the morning shootout near a trailer park in Almagordo. Almer I'm sorry, police said at a news conference. Des desert town of about 31,000 people is home to the White Sands National Monument and Holloman Air Force Base. Police identified the slain officer as Clint Corvinus a four-year veteran who graduated from high school in Almorado. Authorities say he is survived by his parents, girlfriend, and an eight-year-old daughter. I am again so very saddened to see that yet another courageous law enforcement officer has been killed in the line of duty, Governor Susanna Martinez said in a statement. The violence against our police officers has to end, and we must do everything we can to, send, to stand up for those who put their lives on the line every single day to protect us. Cornelius' death marks the second fatal shooting of a police officer in a rural area of the state in less than a, a month. Three weeks ago, authorities said an Ohio fugitive gunned down Officer Jose Chavez during a traffic stop in Hatch, a village about 100 miles west of Almergago that's known for its green chill crop. The suspect in the shooting, Jess, was this Jesse Haynes? Or, yeah, I think that's it. Was taken into custody after a dramatic car p pursuit a carjacking, and the shooting of a bystander whose car Haynes stole, police said. The case and other recent events, I'm already getting tired of reading this, have led to renewed calls for Martinez, a Republican and former prosecutor, to reinstate New Mexico's death penalty. Lawmakers repealed it in 2009 before Martinez took office. The governor said she would back legislation for capital punishment when the legislator convenes in January. In the past, legis in the last legislative season, prior attacks on police, including the May and October 2015 shooting deaths um, of officers in Albuquerque and sub sur suburban Rio Rancho, galvanized an unsuccessful push by Republicans in the state legislature for a slate of tough on crime legislation. Within hours of the shooting Friday, Republican Nate Gentry, an Albuquerque Republican, the state's House Majority Leader, issued a statement that called for laws that put and keep the violent criminals who terrorize our communities behind bars. This is, wow, it just will not end. Um, I mean, yeah, that, I, that's about as much as I want to read of that before giving my opinion. So, an officer who, by all accounts, was a good man, um, was killed doing his job today. And, you know, he survived by his family, and but you know whereas he passes they live on and they are left with the memory of losing someone they cared about and certainly cherished the life of all because he was doing his job you know people talk about the injustices that officers have inflicted on to um, minorities and other types of people you know that I guess occasionally we'll get into some type of um, incident. That probably has happened, but this officer did none of that, and by all accounts did not do anything warranting the grave that he finds himself in now. And who, who, to whom is that right? To whom believes that it is just for this officer to have been killed? And I know there are, uh, you know, people who don't like cops, um, and, you know, for those people, I just feel the need to point out this story because it's an example of what, uh, what the reality is, which is that you have officers who will go out and try to do their job in a you know, seemingly fair and balanced way as he was doing and pay the ultimate price and or sacrifice for you, the same person who might, you know, hate their guts because of what you heard on TV or what happened 50 years ago when you know there was legitimate racism in this country at least on a broad scale um, 
Whereas now it has to be more hidden and shady. And, you know, it's just because of that, we accuse it more often. But, you know, it's really sad to see this. And I'm, I'm glad that uh, the governor took the time out of her day to address it over there. One last thing is that I saw the, um, you know, the whole little part. I don't know why they felt the need to bring up that she was a Republican. I mean, you know, I, I know they're trying to say, oh, well, you know, she's for the death penalty. And that's kind of a view that a lot of Republicans have. But it just felt so out of nowhere. Like, you know, do we really have to politicize this? But whatever. Because she's the governor either way. I'm not sure if you can hear that. Probably, but... Yeah, that, that's just my opinion. I hope I hope the family's able to, you know, cope with the loss. I, I can certainly understand their their grief and, you know, my heart goes out to them because it's never good to lose a father or, you know, uh, you know, just a son, someone that you care about in such a way. I mean, it's it really is um, awful, man. <sighs> what a way to start off the weekend. But yeah, thank you for watching. Have a good day and be safe. Take care.